Hi. Today I thought we might have a little chat about weeds. What exactly are weeds? What makes a plant a weed as opposed to a flower? What's the difference? Our gardens are full of different plants. Some of them are native, some of them are non-native, some of them we grow deliberately and spend ages cultivating and others pop up of their own accord. Um, which ones should we think of as weeds and, and which ones are welcome wildflowers? Why do we spend so long, so many countless hours weeding to get rid of certain plants and, and hours and hours and hours encouraging other plants? What is it about the ones we like and the ones we don't like? So uh, let's have a few examples. This rather beautiful flower is betony. It's a native wildflower mint family, really popular with long-tongued bumblebees. And a beautiful flower, but it's, an, it's a native wildflower. Is it a weed? Well, I'd be hard pushed to call this a weed, but what's the difference between this and teasel or thistles or ragwort or any other plant? They're just all wildflowers at the end of the day. Some people might consider this a weed. Teasel. I think it's gorgeous. It's a glorious plant. It's enormous. Um, these self-seeded in my flower bed and I left them. Uh, it's a native flower, of course. Um, it does readily self-seed, but who wouldn't want these magnificent plants growing in their garden? It's about eight feet tall, this one. And uh, there's lots of bumblebees on it, occasionally butterflies. And, uh, and also the seeds are really popular with finches, things like goldfinches, in the autumn and winter. And it's one of those kind of interesting plants that looks pretty even when it's not flowering. Just this kind of striking structural uh, uh, inflorescence is amazing. Hogweed. It's a very common native wildflower quite a lot in my garden. It's a bit thuggish, but it's beautiful. Uh, it attracts lots of insects, particularly again soldier beetles. They seem to pop up everywhere at this time of year, but also a lot of others too. Not so many right at this second, but uh, um, you get a range of insects, particularly short-tongued pollinators like uh, uh, hogweed. It's related to uh, carrot and parsnip, They're very similar flowers in fact. This is creeping thistle, uh, one of three or four thistle species I've got in my garden. This is probably the most thuggish, it spreads by underground rhizomes and pops up over and over again. So it can take over, I wouldn't plant it in your garden unless you've got a corner that it can't escape from very easily. But it's really popular with insects and this one in front of me is quite a few honey bees. I just saw a, a nomad cuckoo bee on here a second ago. I often get butterflies on, on creeping thistle. Quite an attractive little uh, flower as well. But yeah, it definitely falls on the, the weed end of the spectrum. This of course is ragwort. Widely regarded as a noxious weed and uh, often persecuted, we're told we shouldn't allow any to, to grow, even in our gardens, because it's a terrible stuff, it, it uh, kills horses. And there have been some wild claims that it kills thousands of horses a year, because it is poisonous. But those claims are wildly exaggerated, as far as I can tell, it kills a very, very small number of horses a year, one or two perhaps, and only if it's... Um, cut, dried and made into hay, then horses will eat it and if the hay has a high component of ragwort it can kill them. But you're an absolute fool if you, if you make hay from ragwort. Growing 
in the in the wild or in a garden or wherever um, animals yeah, mammals won't eat it horses know full well not to eat this stuff and don't touch it so it can grow happily in a pasture without posing any threat to livestock at all and it's a native flower it's beautiful and it's food to a lot of insects of course famously cinnabar moths the yellow and black stripy caterpillars are very common in my garden there's none on this plant but I'll show you some in a bit uh, and um, lots and lots of nectar feeding insects love ragwort you get butterflies it's various there's hoverflies on here at the moment there's a few solitary bees it's a pair of the inevitable mating soldier beetles they spend their whole life mating it's absolutely alive with insect activity so I grow it in my garden and I'm proud of it and I think uh, we should be much more tolerant of our beautiful native wildflowers look at all these rag, uh, cinnabar moth larvae on here there's hundreds of them um, brightly coloured to warn that they're poisonous they accumulate the poisons from the ragwort itself in their bodies and uh, so they're toxic to predatory birds. Those are <laughs> soldier beetles buzzing around. One nearly landed on the lens. Uh, lots of them here. So what then is a weed? Um, there's, no, there's no right answer to that. It's whatever you decide it is. Um, one man's weed is another man's wildflower or woman's. Um, you know, so for example, a poppy or poppies growing in a cereal field, the farmer would probably consider them a weed. That's not what he's trying to grow and it wouldn't be helping his crop. Um, but if a poppy were to spring up in your garden, you might uh, think, well, that's very beautiful. I'm, uh, that's a wildflower. Uh, or you might spend ages cultivating poppies to grow in your garden. It just kind of depends on your point of view. Or put it another way, um, you can get rid of all the weeds in your garden, just like that, by just calling them all wildflowers. Or at the very least, we should all learn to be a little bit more tolerant of, of our native wildflowers, many of which have a really important ecological role supporting uh, insect life. Thank you. If you'd like to know more about bumblebees and other pollinators and the wonderful world of insects in general, uh, or about how to uh, make your garden more wildlife friendly, then you might enjoy one of my books available at all the usual places. Thank you.